Okay. Mr. Jayan Tandikar is from Goa and he's uh, joined us with a very short notice. Oh. Good afternoon, Ambikarji. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ambikarji, Chari from Hyderabad. How are you? Excellent, sir. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Long, long time.
గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ సార్ అందరికి గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ ఎవరు అండి సార్ అండ్ ఆల్సో వెల్కమ్ బిఎస్ అండ్ రెడ్డి గారు టుడేస్ చీఫ్ గెస్ట్ అండ్ ది స్పీకర్ ఆఫ్ ది డాక్టర్ వెంకటేశ్వరభాయ్ గారు డాక్టర్ వెంకటసభాయ్ గారు ఐ థింక్ ఈస్ గెటింగ్ కనెక్టెడ్ సార్ అవర్ ఆర్డరీ సెక్రటరీ we'll wait for few minutes sir 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 just now i have been joined sir ah okay right sir right sir, then uh, good evening to all of ah yeah, yeah. <coughs> vengar subhai gar are able to get us yes sir ha uh, yeah please please start sir we will go ahead because uh, again we have to start 6 o'clock another program yes sir sir good evening to all of you first of all i extend a warm welcome for the intermediate lecture <coughs> sir am i audible sir yeah very much very much go ahead uh, okay okay thank you sir so now i request inrg uh, brahma reddy fie chairman telangana state center to preside over the this online meeting and conduct the proceedings okay. thank you sir dr vengatsubai garu honorary secretary of telangana state center institution of engineers our today's respected chief guest and speaker engineer ps <coughs> narayan reddy garu fie former engineer in chief irrigation and cad department dr g venkat supai garu fie honorary secretary iia telangana state center engineer p ramareddy garu fie committee member of telangana state center and convener of the event first presidents first vice presidents <coughs> members of the institution of engineers first chairman first honorary secretaries committee members carpet members of the iia telangana state center and also members of iit arb arbitration and family members of engineer l venkata krishna ayer garu and engineer kv srinivas rao garu engineer ml swami garu budding engineers ladies and gentlemen good evening to all of you today i feel it is a great privilege and honor to be ms this virtual august gathering and i extend a warm and hearty welcome to the chief guest and speaker engineer ps narayan reddy garu and all of you please please mute your speaker please and all of you to this engineer L. Venkata Krishna Iyer, Engineer K. V. Srinivas Rao Garu and Engineer M. L. Swami Garu, 22nd Endowment Lecture. In the year 2001, the then Westfile AP State Center Committee had anonymously resolved to organize an endowment lecture annually at State Center in the honor of the great engineer, statesman, and padma bhushan engineer l venkata krishna iyer former chief engineer in the composite madras state and past chairman of iei ap state center engineer kv srinivas rao former chief engineer irrigation 
and also past chairman of institution of business ap state center and engineer ml swami former engineer in chief irrigation and cad department who have rendered human services to the rest while state of andhra pradesh in the irrigation and power sectors accordingly the state center of the institution of engineers is organizing the above environment lecture every year in form that the telangana state center of the institution of engineers has been regularly organizing 20 environment lectures every year on the birthdays in the honor of the eminent engineers like engineer v subbarao garu engineer m tirupati reddy garu dr j purushottam garu engineer g prabha garu engineer koka krishna mohan rao garu engineer ap ranganatha swami garu dr s raghavachari garu and dr narla tata rao garu engineer matori gopal rao garu engineer gurram kodreddy garu engineer atluri venkateswar rao garu dr j జాన్ మురే గారు సార్ లేటెస్ట్ జాయినింగ్ ఈజ్ డాక్టర్ కె గోపీచంద్ ఫ్రమ్ ది నెక్స్ట్ ఇయర్ ది ఎండోమెంట్ లెక్చర్స్ ఆర్ బీయింగ్ డెలివర్డ్ బై పీపుల్ ఆఫ్ హై ఎమినెన్స్ విత్ కన్సిడరబుల్ ప్రొఫెషనల్ ఎక్స్‌పీరియన్సెస్ టు త్రో లైట్ ఆన్ ది ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఎమర్జింగ్ టాపిక్స్ ఆఫ్ టుడేస్ రిలెవెన్స్ ఐ టేక్ దిస్ ఆపర్చునిటీ టు సే ఫ్యూ వర్డ్స్ అబౌట్ గ్రేట్ ఇంజనీర్స్ లేట్ engineer l venkatakrishna ayyar engineer k v srinivas rao garu and engineer m l swami garu engineer l venkatakrishna ayyar garu served as chief engineer in the composite madras state and retired <coughs> on may 7 1943 he was associated with nagarjun sagar project originally taken up a joint venture of andhra and hyderabad states when the andhra pradesh came into existence in the year 1962 he was elevated as secretary to government pwd at the ripe age of 88 years he is a past chairman of the institution of business india andhra pradesh trade center he was the recipient of padma bhushan award for his meritorious work engineer kv srinivas rao joined the pwd department as assistant engineer in the year 1939 he worked in various positions as assistant engineer exec, executive engineer and superintending engineer in irrigation department he became the chief engineer in the year 1962 later he was promoted as member central water and power commission government of india he was appointed as chairman ap state electricity board in the year 1972 and retired in the year 1974 with an outstanding record of service he was the past chairman of the institution of engineers india ap state center and he undertook many major irrigation projects and responsible for many power projects of andhra pradesh engineer ml swami served in the restwell state of ap in various capacities in krishna and godavari deltas vamsadara project Sri Salem project, Nagarjan Sagar project, and various other medium and minor irrigation projects. He also served as a project engineer in the rest of the AP State Construction Corporation and general management of National Hydro Electric Power Corporation, New Delhi. Engineer M.L. Swami retired as engineer-in-chief in government of AP in the year 1983. today we have arranged engineer l venkata krishna ayyar garu engineer kv srinivas rao garu and engineer ml swami garu 22nd endowment lecture on the theme contract management and alternative dispute resolution i am sure all will be waiting to hear the eminent speaker about topic i am limiting myself and hope that you will enjoy his talk on behalf of the telangana state center of the institution of engineers india and on my own behalf i once again 
extend a hearty welcome to the today's chief guest and speaker, <coughs> Engineer B.S. Narayan Redigaru, FIE, Farmer in Engineer in Chief, Irrigation and CID Department, and all seniors and all professional and all my colleague engineering fraternity uh, and all of you to this important virtual event. Thank you, one and all. Now, may I request <coughs> Engineer P. Ramiredi, FIE committee member, IEA Telangana State Center, the convener of this event to kindly introduce today's chief guest before the chief guest delivers his talk. Over to Engineer P. Ramiredi. Good evening, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Chairman Brahma Redigaru. For I consider it as a, my privilege to introduce our guru and mentor and today's chief guest, Sri Engineer Brahma Reddy, Sriman Naran Reddy, sir, uh, who had been a, a, a source of inspiration for us in the department. He was born on 5th of October, 1954, to Sri Brahma Reddy, Venkatram Redigaru, and uh, Sri Mati Nagamani Amagaru. And is a native of Pedda Ograla, Uyuru, Krishna district. And his education he had in the primary school, uh, upper primary school in Pedda Ograla, uh, in, uh, in the same Uyuru. And up to high school, he, had, he went to uh, Akunuru, Uyuru Mandal. <coughs> and his, uh, did his graduation in first class distinction and the first rank holder, sir. We need to give a big clap to him, sir. He is the first rank holder, first to <coughs> the state from PDA College of Engineering, Gulbarga. And so on, since then, graduated. And later, he did his uh, MTEC structures from NIT Warangal from 82 to 84. Joined service as a student and worked uh, up to uh, 1978 in NS Left and House Muslim. Later, was promoted as a deputy executive engineer <coughs> from 78 to 91, Sri Salem project, <coughs> and subsequently, Vijayawada and TGP in Ellore. He worked as executive engineer from uh, 1991 to 1997, Teluganga project, Nellore. And uh, we got promoted uh, during 1997 and after 2004, uh, Teluganga project, Kadapa and Nellore and KLIS, Mahabhub Nagar. Later on, on promotion, he worked as CCLM project and GLIS Varangal from 2004 to 2007. And he was the ENC administration from uh, uh, 2004 April to uh, <coughs> October 2007 and was ENC irrigation from uh, October 2007 to, to his uh, superannuation, that is during 2011. From uh, <clears throat> June 2019 to, uh, that was up to September 2022, he was the advisor to the Honorable Minister, Water Resources Department, Andhra Pradesh. And he has good many achievements, sir. He obtained the TSC clearances for the GLISS and DIP, Within a period of within 10 months, which itself is a great record, sir. Julio, and also that was Julio obtaining relaxation of BC ratio from 1 to 1.51. That is, uh, again, it calls for a big uh, a clapping of the hands, sir. He obtained the AIBP grant in 2007 and got GLIS up to rupees, for rupees 2,928 crores. He is blessed with two granddaughters and are settled in Hyderabad as a software engineer. And he spends his time with two grandsons and one granddaughter. She welcome our Sri Bhama Reddy, Sri Manaran Reddy, sir, BSN Reddy Garu, popularly known as BSN Reddy Garu. Please kindly give your presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone, sir. I thank uh, <clears throat> President uh, and uh, other uh, uh, Secretary, Honorary Secretary and other members of the Institution of Engineers for giving me an opportunity to speak on the um, on this uh, endowment as an endowment lecturer of three eminent uh, engineers. Uh, I I also feel privileged in, on this behalf. Mostly this uh, presentation is with reference to the EPC system evolved in AP from 2004 onwards, uh, how the 
contract management evolved in respect of epc system and uh, how some of the issues got resolved with reference to that experience i have i have i try i will try to explain maybe specifically with reference to epc system uh, in the erstwhile combined ap state so so the time given i will make try to make, make a quick uh, this thing uh, so as you all know i i don't think any elaborative this thing is required in respect of contract what is it it's a promise enforceable by law and it consists of offer and acceptance which is shall be legally binding uh, it should be exchanged for a consideration like that so it is guided by mostly the conditions of the agreement between the parties and uh, in addition to that indian contract act followed by some other acts like uh, arbitration and conciliation act and other and other acts like labor laws and all that it's not confined to only by one act so what are the essentials of a valid contract there must be an agreement or meeting of the minds the agreement must be between parties competent to enter into a contract let us say a government officer as a government officer certain officers are given the powers to enter into a contract suppose let us say an executive engineer is empowered to enter into agreement up to 50 lakhs like that sc is up to certain level like 2 crores or something like that ah uh, no sc is up to any any value um, so executive engineer is limited to certain value so this is a, this is how uh suppose let us say in respect of private contracts uh who whoever is authorized by that company or to uh, enter into a contract is only can enter in, can give a uh, sign the agreement any person in a private organization who is not authorized to enter into agreement such an agreement may not be valid before law what is an agreement every promise and every set of promises forming the consideration for each other is an agreement and this agreement should be enforceable by law but let us say what is meant by enforceable by law i i enter let us say for example i enter into an agreement to supply some narcotics to with a party so will it become a contract there is an agreement but it cannot become a contract because such an a supply of narcotics cannot be enforceable by law this is the difference between agreement and contract an agreement can become only a contract can become a contract only which can be enforceable by law apart from the agreement clauses specific agreement clause for each of the work particularly in uh, pwd contracts we have a by default certain ap standard specifications preliminary specification which become part of the agreement it should be it may be the case mostly in most of the state governments uh, because these uh, preliminary specification or ap detailed standard specifications were uh, as become a, as a um, more originally they are madras state uh, rules after bifurcation they have become ap standard specific specifications some of the uh, important uh, specifications were extension of time under clause 59 and uh, again who is competent to extend and again such class 60 abc deals with also deals with uh, class 60 a also deals with extension of time uh, a deals with the termination of the uh, contract when he doesn't uh, even uh, start the work clause 60b deals with uh, extension of time where the contractor is at fault still the extension can be given by the appropriate authority with some penalty and 60c is a case where the contractor is not able to uh, execute the work as per the milestone program but 
the department feels that a part of it can be withdrawn from the original agency and can be entrusted to uh, some other agency to keep up the milestone program. In this case, if an agency comes forward, new agency comes forward, comes forward to execute a part of the work with the same agreement rates, it can be assigned. Or if there is a additional expenditure when it is assigned to a new agency, that can be limited. The extra expenditure can be recovered from the original agency limiting to the 5% of the agreement value. This is the uh, class 60C. And again, class 61 stipulates that when a contractor suspends the work and he doesn't, even after due notices by the departmental officers, he doesn't uh, resume the work or the, he doesn't cope up with their progr progress a departmental officer can given by notice of 14 days. The work can be taken over by the department and it can be used, executed by inviting tenders through another agency. The dif difference in such a, uh, through, when we execute through a new agency, differential cost is to be borne by the um, old agency, irrespective of the value of the access. Even if it exceeds 5%, uh, even then he is liable for the damages. This is clause 61. There are certain other clauses dealing with contract risk and insurance, wherein the contractor is expected to insure the work the moment uh, agreement is concluded with the department. And the clause 54 deals with the subletting. In, in this state, uh, uh, subletting, Contractor is permitted in certain cases, subletting uh, not exceeding 50% of the value of the agreement, wherein some specialized works are involved. Such a subletting can be given with the permission of the department, prior approval of the department, uh, oh, and, but not exceeding 50% uh, of the agreement. Oh, no. okay. right. Uh, there is some problem with the screen sharing. Uh, I think now you got it. Right, right. So, class 54 deals with the subletting in a certain situations where uh, specialized works are involved and with the prior permission of the department, such as subletting is permitted. Uh, class 56 deals with the ratification orders of the executing engineer by the agreement concluding authority. 68 deals with the payment based on measurements. Uh, that's uh, within a reasonable period of 14 days or two months, whatever it is, uh, as per the agreement. 69 deals with the, the interest on money due to the contract. Mostly it is, contractor is not entitled to the interest, that's the class 69. 72 deals with the situation wherein the contractor becoming insolvent, insane or impregnant. This is a very, very rare situation we encounter. Uh, suppose a contract is uh, contractor become insolvent or he become insane or he is imprisoned for whatever they have. maybe for a reason a criminal case or whatever. In such a situation, department can close the contract without any penalty and uh, settle his accounts. That's the class 672. But normally we don't. Uh, uh, we, we normally we don't come across such a situation, but it's a very, very rare case. 73 of PSJPS deals with the arbitration clause. These are the some of the important. Oh, I think there is still some problem. With that. Escape button. Yes. Yeah.
total. There is some problem again with the screen sharing. Right, right button, click the right button, click the right button. Right, the right button, click the right button, click the right button, click the right button. Richard, Richard, huh? In my last screen, sharing out like. Water. Next to the. There is some problem, just one, one minute, sir. I think now I got it. Yeah. I, I think we can resume it. The screen sharing is got rectified. So, what is a dispute? Dispute is an assertion of right by one party and denial by the other party. So, common um, failures resulting in consequential disputes. It can be from both sides, one, uh, one side by the department and the other side by the agency, right? So most of the failures from the department side could be as follows. Failure to hand or... Ramanai Garu, can you mute just a little bit? Ramanai Garu, thank you. Ah. So common failures resulting in consequential disputes. It can be from both, both from the department side and also from contractor side. The common um, failures from the department could be majorly handing over of position of site to the contractor, delay in obtaining statutory permissions like um, um, forest clearance, environmental clearance, uh, like that, uh, land acquisition. Uh, delay in sup supply of working drawings, detailed designs and decisions. Delay in supply of materials if contemplated in the agreement. Or, uh, ordering suspension or stoppage of work or entering with the progress of work in any manner. So most of the, in these situations, the department uh, invite tenders without, uh, uh, while the land equation is still progress or environmental clearance is still in progress. So in such a situation, um, the most, uh, um, uh, this thing, major issue would be handing over of site and also obtaining statutory permissions from the government, uh, the respective departments of government of India. 
Sometimes even the delay, there will be delays in supply of working drawings like this, the detailed designs and also some decisions on the site. These are the some, some of the failures from the department side. And the, um, in some cases, if there are excess quantities, et cetera, there will not be approvals from the department for such excess quantities or variations. Uh, failure to nominating specialist subcontractors and uh, of course this may not be a major issue. Delay caused by other agencies employed at the site of the work uh, by the owner in addition to the contract. This is a case where uh, mechanical contractor is different uh, separately, mechanical works are separately interested. Uh, where in, uh, in mostly in dams, where uh, direction of gates and uh, primary embedded parts and secondary embedded parts have to go and in uh, simultaneously both by uh, in sync with the civil agency and mechanical agency. Uh, the other uh, dispute could be wrongful direction of liquidated damage or penalty. And the other is uh, the failures from the agency side could be abandonment or total failure to complete either to start with or midway in execution. Delay in completion of the works, defective work, abandonment or total failure to complete, delay in completion. I suppose in respect of EPC work, defective design, uh, defective materials or workmanship. Uh, failure to submit land program, unauthorized subcontracting, failure to ensure as required, failure to employ qualified engineers, failure to maintain and submit labor reports, Failure to take safety precautions, causing damage to property of the work of other agencies. These are the some of the issues from the agency side that could result in some of the disputes. Uh, there could be a situation where either of the parties are not responsible for the delay, like force major issues like natural calamities, civil war, or strikes. Mostly natural calamities, sometimes floods would be the major cause in dam works and all that, um, but uh, is a very rare occur occurrence. Other civil war and strikes may not be a big issue in normal contracts. Uh, dispute can be difference of any kind. It shall be in first place be referred to and settled by the engineer. Mostly if the engineer takes a lead in charge, engineer in charge of the project, our package work takes lead in and uh, dispute is uh, settled at his level without any bias. I think this will not, this, most of them uh, get settled then and there itself. Normally in uh, contracts, the engineer is expected to hear uh, in some projects, apart from the department, there will be a third party engineer, independent engineer. These disputes initially will be referred to the independent engineer, wherein he can give the decision within 30 days, uh, like that. Upon receipt of the written notice of the decision of engineer in charge, or the contractor shall um, proceed without delay to comply with such notice of decision. Failure to the above contractor shall give 30 days of notice to an engineer in charge, intending to uh, bring uh, bring the matter to dispute resolution mechanism as specified in the agreement. Suppose the engineer gives his decision. If contractor is not satisfied, he can give a notice to the department to his decision to is refer this uh, dispute to the resolution mechanism specified in the agreement. So in certain agreements, we have direct arbitration clause. In certain agreements, we have only in, in Combined AP state, we have only uh, instead of arbitration, we have a civil civil suit. The contractor has above fifty thousand. The contractor has to go to file a civil suit, not by arbitration. The dispute has to be resolved only by uh, civil suit. Not so. In certain contracts, uh, we also have dispute adjudication board. In mostly in the World Bank funded projects. Uh, we have uh, in, before arbitration, uh, DAB is, a, is a part as a part of the agreement. Dispute adjudication bodies 
will be in place from the while execution is uh, is in course during execution itself this dib will be visiting the site now and then at a certain interval and keep itself um, familiar with the happenings in the site from time to time so that uh, their familiarization will uh, make it easy for them to give decision within within the time stipulated the 28 days or two months as stipulated as per the stipulation in the agreement uh, however this conciliation was also introduced in august 96 through I mean, uh, world act to 1940 arbitration act was repealed in august 96 by central government and a new act was uh, brought in uh, by name conciliation and arbitration act 1996 so the total the arbitration act 40 is doesn't uh, exist no more exists after uh, august new act came into force however in ap government there are certain cases pending for more than 20 years uh, the government of ap israel government arbitration clauses have been withdrawn and civil suit clause was introduced somewhere in 1983 or 84 the old cases were hanging on in various courts even after 20 years uh but uh, all the cases came to high court but government of ap have taken a decision to resolve these old cases of more than 20 25 years through conciliation and uh, which is permissible under the new act and three committees have been formed by government of ap for three regions one for the coastal ap one for the telangana region and one for the trial sima region so all these committees headed by the senior officers in the cadre of engineer in chief and all, apart from and uh, one member from the finance department as uh, director of uh, works audit works accounts uh, and some senior advisor to the technical advisors in the department have been involved in the committee and this committee each case of the respective region has been examined by the committee with the concerned chief engineer and also the agency side uh, after discussing with the both sides the these committees have recommended whatever is uh, they felt uh, correct and what is not admissible what is uh, reasonable including the rate of interest and the government was uh, has also accepted these recommendations almost all the cases referred to these committees have been resolved and recommended for resolution by these the uh, conciliation committees all the cases have been the recommendations have been accepted by the government and the cases have all the pending cases have been resolved uh, within i think 2 to 3 years most of the cases um, this is the arbitration and conciliation act for arbitration is the settlement of dispute by the decision of not a regular and ordinary court of law but of one or more of persons called arbitrators it is efficient expeditious economical substitute to courts actions these are disadvantage legal principles may be violated rules of evidence may be waived or in here the arbitration arbitration is a like a quasi judicious forum which can stipulate is its own way of functioning and all that it's not legally uh, you cannot make them to follow the uh, civil procedure code or something like that while uh, uh, conducting its proceedings uh, <clears throat> here whatever i have told up to 10000 or 50000 uh, above 50000 it is to be referred to the um, uh, up to 50000 only arbitration can be conducted and above 50000 um it should be by way of civil suit there's to a ap government um, the reference for the adjudication under this clause of course this may not be a situation where no contractor will go for arbitration if a claim is less than 50000 i believe but it is a agreement 
dispute resolution board if a dispute of any kind whatsoever whatever arises between the employer and the contract connection with or arising out of the contract or the execution of works whether during execution of the works or after their completion and whether before or after repudiation or after termination of the contract including any disagreement by either party with any action in action opinion instruction determination certificate of valuation of the engineer in charge of this or his nominee the matter in dispute shall in first in its first place be referred to dispute resolution board established layer to in case of contract valuing 10 crores or above this is a clause where a government erstwhile government has given a gvo um, that these the drb can be utilized instead of uh, going for a, uh, as an alternate dispute uh, resolution mechanism i am not sure whether any department has utilized this uh, forum but uh, in hyderabad we Uh, in Hyderabad, we have an alternate dispute resolution board uh, unit here in Hyderabad. Uh, that uh, board has been established in 2018. Uh, that board has been established in 2018. 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 That or his nominee unless and until same shall be revised by the conciliator or in dispute resolution review board recommendation or here the issue is once the dispute is uh, uh, referred to the drb the contractor shall not say that i will not work until the, the dispute is resolved that's not the case so he has to continue the work the, uh, even though the case is the drb decision is pending so he shall is is a, is a uh, contract uh, responsibility rests with him even the disputes are under resolution all all claims shall be decided by civil court of competent jury by way of regular suit now this is a case where um, the ap agreement the clause refers uh, dispute resolution by way of a civil suit only for the claims above 50000 a reference for adjudication under this clause shall be made by either party to the contract within 6 months from the date of implementing the contract of the preparation final bill or is having acceptance of payment whichever is earlier the relevant clause of ep standards specification stands modified to the extent provided in this clause so here we have a limitation act also which is very very relevant and important in this dispute mechanism resolution mechanism the limitation for referring the matter to dispute resolution mechanism is 3 years from the date of denial by the department if agency refers the matter after 3 years of limitation period the claim is barred by limitation therefore it would be advisable to the to communicate the decision of the department on the claim made by the agency at the earliest without keeping it pending uh, that the limitation period shall start at the earliest suppose let us say while the execution is going on a contractor makes a claim and the department keeps it pending for more than a year or till the final bill is made so either you can give your decision within a reasonable period where the limitation of three years period starts from the date of denial by the department. Suppose if the department doesn't give any decision and the final bill is so Venkat Subhai Garu, can you please mute yourself? Venkat Subhai Garu, can you please mute yourself? Venkat Subhai Garu, you need to mute yourself. Yeah. Thank you. So suppose the department doesn't give any decision of the claim uh, dispute by the uh, claim by the agency till the and the final bill is made without any decision by the department the three years limitation starts from the date of final payment of final bill so the department is advised it is advisable for the department to give its decision at the earliest let us say uh, 
uh, the contract um, the first decision is given by the department and the, after three years. Um, suppose let us say after six months of the from the agreement period starts starts uh, the um, let us say from uh, in a during the contract I give a department gives a decision and mm -hmm. the, from that date of decision the final bill is made after four years let us say the contractor cannot claim that uh, refer that dispute to the any forum. Uh, because the three years period is over um, after the final bill. Um, uh, suppose he refers the dispute after final bill, but the period of limitation of three years is over by that time and it cannot be referred and the, the, the department can contest it by way of barred by the, stating that it is barred by limitation. That is the advantage for the department to give its decision at the earliest. Suppose if they don't give any decision within before final bill, the limitation starts from the final bill, payment of final bill. That's the issue here, the limitation act. Uh, here, actually, uh, we have. I am working as a, one of the dispute board member in uh, in an irrigation dam work, costing about seven hundred. 687 crores in Punjab. Uh, it is still under, uh, it is going on, work is going on. The dispute board, uh, um, it's a part of the agreement, uh, the, which, which consists of three members, one referred, one uh, nominated by the agency, one, nom one member nominated by the department, and also the chairman. So this committee, uh, during the execution of the work, this uh, river falls, uh, the dam, width of the dam falls within the two states. One uh, from the Punjab side, the other is the um, Jammu and Kashmir side. The issue is the, after executing a part of the work of 5 to 10 percent, the JNK state has said, you can't execute the work within my domain. The, Two-third of the width of the dam is in Jammu, Jammu side. So the, the department has asked the contractor to stop the work, the PWD Punjab. Then the work could not be resumed uh, until another 50 months. The original agreement period is just 42 months. And the period of uh, stoppage of work is for 50 months. So after 50 months, the issue got resolved at the state's level and the work was resumed and uh, till such time the agency has to keep all his men machinery etc idle uh, this is one issue 50 months stoppage of work and again after resumption of work again covid has come march um, in 2020 and 2021 seasons uh, to, to stoppage of uh, labor migration and all that, and the government also asked to stop the supply of industrial oxygen to other um, uh, to other than for hospitals. So this has uh, delayed the work, and the department itself has asked them not to execute the work in the COVID period. So this has resulted in um, uh, claims by the department, the agency, on after a prolonged hearing of the several uh, this thing, uh, meetings, mostly online only. The, the this DAB, DRB has given its decision, agreeing, uh, giving its decision of uh, giving approximately 75 crores to the agency for that 50 months period and also for the COVID uh, stoppage of works in two, two seasons in COVID period. 2020 and 21. Initially, the department has uh, given its decision to refer it to the arbitration. Uh, this de decision was given in December 2021, but the decision, because it did not, they made a claim of more than 200 crores, but uh, the But both thought of giving a, referring it to the arbitration. Then 
at the level of government are reviewing the project from time to time. At government level, they have taken a decision to Sorry, there was some intervention in the Zoom. So, so ultimately, the, the issue got, uh, the government has taken a decision to accept the committee's uh, um, uh, recommendations, DRB decision. And uh, I think it is a um, good decision by the government instead of referring the matter to the arbitration which may take, a, again, a few years to resolve by the time the contractor also will suffer for cash flows and all that. The department also will get delayed because this is a majorly a 600 and plus megawatts uh, power project in addition to some irrigation benefits to Jammu side. So the, the, the dispute was ultimately resolved by an amicable solution by accepting the DAB decision by the government of Punjab. I think this was the uh, benefit of uh, alternate dispute resolution mechanism, uh, mechanism recently. Yeah. So the slides are not present. Yes. Slides are not present. Yeah. 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 There is some disturbance again, sir. Okay, so this is the <clears throat> where I feel uh, it's a wise decision by government, uh, government from, from government side where uh, the project is expected to complete uh, again in a, in a year from now. I think recently they have paid the whole amount in two installments. They have paid in um, recently at the balance amount also. And the contractor is also um, is confident that he can complete the project by overcoming the cash flow problem and all that. So here we have another dispute uh, up in a combined AP state uh, in Kadapa district where uh, I was when when I was uh, superintendent engineer. This work uh, of uh, uh, 750 lakhs, the agreement value, whose agreement value is six, uh, six crores. And uh, the, ultimately, the agreement got revised due to certain variations and all that, 809 lakhs. But the, the contract was uh, terminated under class 61 because of certain issues with the contractor. But he, he, con he has uh, made a claim of... Uh, 535 lakhs uh, as a, through a civil suit in Kadapa uh, district court, but uh, proper counter was made by the department. Uh, this claim uh, not agreeing for these claims, and the case was uh, disposed in favor of the department in 2010. Out of 535 lakhs, only EMD FSD was agreed by the civil suit civil court district court and all the other claims of 500 lakhs was denied by the uh, because of the proper uh, counter uh, and presentation made by the department along with all effort and uh, as, uh, uh, supporting documents and all that this is how so the uh, what i am stressing is in a genuine case where the contractor is uh, having a right claim we should accept the right claim so that the both agency will not suffer and your project will get uh, completed at the earliest and the nation gets the benefit of completing the project and its uh, fruits of the project will come early. Uh, this is what I can say. In recently, arbitration, um, arbitration Act was also amended 
so that the disputes in the contracts are uh, time of disputes got gets uh, resolved uh, within a limited period of in each court was given a time of one year maximum to resolve the issues in each of the so uh, separate uh, benches have also been formed commercial courts have been formed and this is the right step in uh, early 15 to 20 years as was the case earlier so i conclude this my presentation uh, uh, if any members want a clarification i, I would be happy to answer them uh, thank you for the institution of indies uh, telangana state center for giving me this opportunity on this great occasion thank you sir everyone thank you sir uh, uh, dr b s ambedkar for the excellent uh, presentation on arbitration and contract management uh, any members would like to have any questions sir please you can uh... sir this is pradeep reddy yeah uh, um the presentation was uh, very wide it included a lot of topics uh but uh, with all okay uh, but with all due respect sir there are just one or two minor typing errors just want to point out for the sake of um, audience but uh, with with all humility i'll submit that uh, the presentation was great but the limitation act is 1963 sir not 1978 okay okay i stand corrected sir Yes. yes. So it's 1963 Limitation Act. Yeah. And, in fact, uh, 1978 is a. I think it was that act was uh, Interest Act. Right? It got the uh, right. That, that's a, it's a minor minor issue just for clarifications. But having said that, sir, um, regarding arbitration, as I said, you have covered an ocean of topics. So it's not possible for uh, every minute detail to be captured. But in essence, what you said at the, towards the end. that uh, arbitration regime has improved now there is a time bound process so al- arbitration is also a, a good alternative not just the uh, dispute resolution pro- uh, board dr having said that i have two questions sir one why are we still limiting to 50000 value to be referred to arbitration because everybody now is promoting arbitration so why not Um, release it and say that any amount can be arbitrated yes uh, this has come into actually this limitation was uh, prescribed somewhere in 1983 i believe yes sir department. so what happened is earlier uh, the the arbitration clause was there prior to that and the government has observed that um, let me give my own example as executive engineer in nellore uh, elganga project this clause was mostly misused by few not all few contractors who are very smart i have a case my own experience the contractor did not take the site possession of the site for 42 months after concluding the agreement the agreement period starts from the date of handing over site at that point of time this is a case prior to somewhere early Uh, late 80s but uh, after 42 months he take he taken over the site and executed a value of 11000 just cut off cut off he has done for the canal embankment portion and he has made a claim of 40 lakhs can you imagine this an execution was done is just 11000 and the claim was is is maybe a rare case claim was 40 lakhs and um, i could not digest myself as an executive engineer and uh, of course we we made a every effort um, uh, this is how how it has been misused earlier even the award of the arbitration was two to three times of the original agreement value this is how probably as you said 50000 limitation is uh, no meaning now at this point of time which was uh, almost 40 years old one that, that limitation i think government should uh, no that's what i said uh, even nobody would go for arbitration for uh, if the value is less than this claim is less than 50 it should go at least up to if the government wants uh, it can go up to 5 to 10 crores as said or even it can go 
it is up to the state government how it should uh, to take a policy decision on this because it, it's a department i think uh, the irrigation department being the uh, having a lead role in these uh, codal provisions and all that it can uh, it is the responsibility of the department to send proposals for modification of these rules particularly present uh, uh, time at uh, the agreements of, at the value of the works have gone several fold if you compare with 1980 after 40 years even not only 40 years even 2004 to now even in the last 20 years the cost of projects have gone multifold because of the various reasons so this 50000 makes no sense for me also yes sir my second and last question is about the apdss yes. i'm not trying to question any regional uh, territorial names uh, but i'm trying to understand who has the power to modify the clauses of apdss and uh, the even the title let's say telangana state dss or things of that sort so who has the power i think uh, normal the codal provisions are uh, to be modified by the government uh, with the, maybe with the uh, with the with the approval of the cabinet i believe thank you sir uh, all these things i think i am not sure whether it was modified as telangana state it was not i, I was not, i am not sure it it, it was not sir uh, um very irrigation department is the lead lead department in these cases it has to send the proposals to the government and with the approval of the cabinet they can modify it even our, we borrowed it madras uh, when the yes. bifurcated madras we, am, it, we used to call it mdss madras yes. retail stand later we yes. modified as apdss now we can also yes relevant. the reason sir I'll, i'll just explain in a minute why i asked is as you rightly said sir there are several provisions which are outdated they need yes. to be modified and we would like to give a representation to the authority that these provisions which have been even stuck down by the courts are still in the apdss yes. 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 so for yes. that reason i wanted to find out who has the authority that was the only intention nothing to do with any other uh, interpretation yeah, yeah. i am <laughs> no no issue Yeah, Normally, you, these codal provisions can be modified only by government or with the departments. Uh, I mean, board of CEs can always uh, take a lead role, and they can recommend to the government, state government, which can take up this issue and place it before the cabinet and uh, modify it. Thank you, Pradeep Redgar. Anybody else, please? We are running short of time, also we have to start another webinar at uh, six. This is my first presentation, sir. If there are any mistakes, please pardon me, because I never participated. I presented this uh, uh, this Zoom meeting and this presentation. Well, we are all good. immature. There is no problem. We take all the care. So I have to take the support of the technical persons here in Institute Navinini, Hyderabad. Okay. So anyway, I think if there is no question, nobody. Uh, now I request our honorary secretary, Dr. Venkat Supai Garu, uh, kindly to propose vote of thanks. Thank you, Chairman Sir. Respected uh, today's chief guest and speaker, Engineer B S Narayan Reddy, FIE, former Engineer in Chief, Irrigation and Cat Department, Engineer B Brahma Reddy, FIE, Chairman. IA Telangana State Center, Engineer P Ram Reddy, FIE Committee Member, and Convener of this event, past Presidents, past Vice Presidents, Council Members, past Chairmen, past Honorary Secretaries, Committee Members, and Corporate Members of IA DC, Family Members of Engineer L Venkatesh Krishna Iyer, Engineer K V Srinivasarao, and Engineer M L Swami. Ladies and gentlemen, all the participants and ladies and gentlemen, good evening to all. On behalf of the Telangana State Center of IEI, and on my own behalf, I convey our sincere and profound thanks to Engineer B S Narayan Reddy Garu, FIE Farmer Engineer and in Chief Irrigation Care Department, for sparing his valuable time and addressing the gathering on this event. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, sir.
sir. I also thank the dignitaries, all the participants, past presidents of IEA, past chairman of IEA, past honorary secretaries, council members, MP members, corporate members, and others who made it convenient to attend this webinar. I also thank the representatives of media for their unstinted support to cover the proceedings of this event. Thanks to one and all. Now I request all of you kindly stand for national anthem. So a small request, sir. Please join next meeting starting at six. So is also beautiful topic, sir. Uh, so I request you to join the link again back. Thank you. Thank you, sir. जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे जय हिंद